I have decided to divide the topics into two main parts. So first, we'll discuss the introduction to organic chemistry. Then later, we will review ideas related to structure and bonding. So that would include periodic table. Under periodic table, we'll have a quick review on atomic structure, electron distribution, electron configuration. Then under bonding, we will just give emphasis to one type of uh, a bond, the covalent bond, since this is the commonly encountered or commonly observed type of bond in organic molecules. We'll also review about electronegativity and bond polarity. Okay, so let me begin with introduction to organic chemistry. So let's start it by answering the following question. What is organic chemistry? Why should we study it? Can you type in at least one word that describes organic compound or one element that is very commonly observed in organic molecule? Uh, do you have any idea? You can type in in the chat box. An element that is commonly observed in organic compound, yes, correct, carbon. And that is actually the focus now of organic chemistry. We study here carbon-containing compounds, any compounds containing carbon together with hydrogen. Now, why is it, uh, is it relevant? Why is it important to study? Actually, the answer to these questions is what surrounds us. Diba? Kahit tayo, tayo tao, we humans are made up of organic chemicals. Okay, let's say, for example, the protein that makes up our hair, our skin, our muscles, that's organic. The DNA, uh, the blueprint of life, that consists of more than 100 million of carbon atoms. DNA pa lang. So it's a complex organic molecule. The food that nourishes us, now that's those majority are organic. Even the medicines now available commercially in the market, majority are organic chemicals. Okay, so anyone, anyone who is curious about life, living things, or if you guys, Pohun, if you will become future registered pharmacist or pharmacist researchers you wanted to discover uh, medications for this particular diseases the first thing that you should understand in order to contribute something on life sciences you have to understand first organic chemistry okay now i want you to look at the following structure now try to observe for now these structures may look unfamiliar you know, for now they are very complex to to look at but actually these structures are structures of familiar molecules if you are familiar with paracetamol marketed under the brand name biogesic that's the structure of paracetamol dolphinal yung methanamic acid yan yung structure niya sugar oh, you know sugar ay disaccharide a combination of fructose and glucose skelan naprox and sodium it's a pain reliever anti-inflammatory amoxicillin and antibiotic i believe all of you are familiar with the names yung mga pangalan now looking at their structure hindi familiar di ba yung structures for now kasi you are still on your first year level so what's good about uh, being a student pharmacist in your higher courses, you will be learning the chemistry of medicines. Chemistry of medicines, meaning you will soon be drawing the same similar structures for any substance that you are interested in. Okay? So for now, ang ato sang buhaton para masabta ninyo ang medicinal chemistry is to learn basic organic chemistry so that will be the foundation in order to understand uh, medicinal ha, chemistry if gusto mo maging legal drug expert if you really wanted to be one you don't have any choice but to study medicinal chemistry 
Okay, so part of it, one step, Anna, is to understand organic chem. Okay, now in organic chemistry, we will uh, focus more on the general properties ng mga organic molecules, how they are being, uh, or how they are different from inorganic ones. Okay, now long time ago, sa mga chemists, many chemists believe na ang pinaka simplest explanation for the difference in the behavior of organic versus inorganic compound is that ang mga organic compounds, they contain that what we call peculiar vital force. Okay. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, you can actually extract or obtain you know, the description or the explanation of a certain word by understanding the term. Kung kag vital, it comes from the Latin word vita. Vita means life. Okay, so you connect this information to the uh, statement provided. Vital force theory, it states that uh, all, organ, uh, all organic compounds, they are only synthesized within living species. Okay, organic compounds are only synthesized within living species. That's vital force theory. Kasi nga, vita means life. So kahit, uh, kahit anong... Uh, organic compounds okay, na na-synthesize, galing lang po yan daw sa mga living organism. Example, galing sa humans, plants, animals, microorganisms. So that's what vital force theory means. However, later on, it has suffered invalidations from other chemists. Okay. So it has been proven wrong lately because we have this French chemist named Frederick Wooler. He was able to convert inorganic salt in the laboratory into organic compound. So yung inorganic salt na in experiment niya is yung ammonium, sorry, ammonium cyanate. Okay? Ginawa niya sa laboratory, he applied heat in that inorganic salt. So, nag-apply siya ng heat and suddenly it forms organic <coughs> chemical, urea. Okay, urea has this uh, chemical uh, structure. Okay, kindly copy it. So, that's urea. So, based sa discovery ni Wooler, pwede naman pala mag-synthesize ng organic compound in the laboratory. Hindi necessary na manggaling talaga sa living species. Tama? So, na-invalidate niya. Okay? Na-prove niya na wrong yung uh, theory on vital force or vitalistic theory. So, with this discovery of Wooler, then... He was deemed as the father of organic chem, father of organic chemistry. Okay. And since yung first organic compound na na-synthesized sa laboratory discovered by Wooler is urea, then we could tell na ang urea, itong synthetic, Synthetic ito kasi, di ba, made in the laboratory, artificial siya. Okay? So, the, we could uh, consider then na itong na-discover ni Wooler na organic compound in a form of urea in the laboratory is the first organic compound synthesized in the lab. First organic compound synthesized in the lab. Okay. Now, naturally, tayo humans, we produce urea. Okay. So, yung urea na yan na napaproduce ng tao, which is present in human urine, yan naman yung 
natural. Okay, natural. Kasi galing siya mismo sa living species. In bi uh, galing siya from a biological origin. Okay. So ito, ang na-discover ni Wooler is synthetic urea kasi inside the lab. So with that discovery, we could uh, say na there is no uh, fundamental differences talaga between organic and inorganic compounds. The same lang na fundamental principle ang nag -e explain sa mga behaviors of all substances regardless of its origin or complexity. Okay? So ano lang yung distinguishing uh, difference or distinguishing characteristic na nag na naga separate kay organic from inorganic compound it is the presence of carbon okay that's the only distinguishing characteristic of organic chemicals again they contain the element carbon kaya nga when we describe organic chemistry <coughs> It is the study of carbon-containing compounds. Then kindly add na lang din hydrogen. Kasi lahat, if you try to observe all the structures of organic chemicals, aside from carbon, hydrogen is also present. It is because hydrogen being the simplest element, simplest atom, as it bonds, form a bonds with carbon atom, it adds uh kumbaga, it adds flexibility or stability sa mismong molecule na mabubuo okay kaya nga kasama palagi si carbon uh, si hydrogen with carbon sa mga organic molecules okay so i want you to uh answer this comp comprehension check lang if you understand the concept being presented earlier slide a uh, true or false lang for the first statement you can type in your answers ha you can type in now for the first statement is it true or false all organic compounds are always synthesized from living organism is it true or false okay very good it's a false statement okay what makes it false the word all and yung always Hindi lahat. Okay? Kaya nga, di ba, ang vitalistic theory earlier, sabi natin, it has been proven wrong already. Hindi lahat ng organic compounds class synthesized lang sa living organism. Okay? Hindi lahat ah, ng or organic compounds available ngayon that surrounds us galing sa living organism, pwede din na synthesize sila saan? Sa laboratory. <clears throat> okay. What about the second statement? Substances produced from living sources are organic compounds. Substances produced from living sources, they are considered organic. True or false? <clears throat> True, of course. No, kahit anong comp pound na ma-produce ng living organism like tayo, humans, animals, plants, microorganisms. As long as living sources, kapag may na-produce siyang any chemical substances, considered yan na organic. Okay? Kasi ang living species are made up of organic chemicals. So kung ano yung ma-produce ng isang living species, na chemicals considered yon classified yon as organic okay sige thank you thank you for co uh, participating sige now let me ask you if you will be asked to classify carbon dioxide how will you classify this molecule is it organic or in organic <clears throat> Based sa definition natin sa mga organic compounds, it should contain carbon with hydrogen. Do you consider carbon dioxide organic or inorganic? Yes? Organic or inorganic? O halo-halo yung sagot. Ano yung final answer? Try to analyze. Sabi natin kanina, ang organic compound dapat may hydrogen kasama si carbon. So, do you consider carbon dioxide as organic? 
or in organic? Sige, go. Final answer is? <clears throat> okay, very good. In organic siya, ha? It's because of the absence of hydrogen. Okay, so kindly uh, take note of that. Kasi I, I give emphasis earlier. Hindi lang carbon, ha? Dapat meron din hydrogen. Okay. Now this time, since carbon is the most commonly uh, commonly observed element in organic chemicals, let's try to identify what makes carbon so special. Okay, bakit siya unique? Okay, so one reason here, it is because of the carbon's position in the periodic table. Carbon's electronic structure, sulat ko muna ha, carbon's electronic structure and uh, its position. Position in periodic table. Okay, sorry for the background noise. Yes, ha? Okay, now let us recall the periodic table. But this is how we visualize a periodic table. Okay, now I re I recall natin nasaan yung position ng carbon. Diba nasa period 2 siya? Okay, isulat natin yung mga element na nasa period 2 ng periodic table. Diba we have lithium. Beryllium, then dito, boron, and dito yung carbon. Okay? Then nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Uh, disregard the last um, group. Kasi yung last group, di ba, stable na sila. They have completely filled outermost, outermost shell. Okay? So, disregard natin sila. Now, try to look at the position of carbon here. It is located in the middle portion in period 2. Nasa napagitnaan siya, napagitnaan siya. Tatlo yung nas, tatlong element nasa left side niya, tatlong element nasa right side niya. So nasa middle part siya. So, with that position of carbon, that uh, makes it able to share all its electron. Share all its electron. Yung valence electron niya meron apat. Kasi part siya ng group 4A, di ba? How do you identify, di ba, valence electron? You just look at the group number. Sa ang group siya na belong. So, part siya sa group 4. So, meron siyang apat na valence electron that will participate later on to chemical bonding. Okay? So, neither siya mag-lose nor, uh, nor gain ng electron. Neither. So, dili siya mo hatag, okay? Dili po siya mo, kasi uh, hatag means lose, di ba? Lose electron. Dili niya i-hatag or i-magain or magain ng electrons during chemical reaction. Instead, gagawin niya is share. Okay, i-share niya merong part na sa kanya, may part din sa other ele other atom kung sino yung kabanding niya. That's sharing of its electron. Forming, okay, forming four covalent bonds. Stable covalent bonds. So that's one reason. Okay, then second reason, okay, is that it is able to form multiple bonds within itself. Diba we call it catenation. Isulat natin ha. It has the ability to form multiple bonds within itself. Example, carbon could form double bond within itself. Or triple bond within itself. So, that's multiple bond. Okay, within sa carbon lang din. Okay, forming very long chains or close chain. Pwede din mga ring, no? Ang kaya niyang i-form stable, closed chain na mga molecules of carbon. So, that's catenation. And lastly is 
ang carbon alone, carbon alone among other elements in the periodic table, capable siya mag-form ng diverse stable compound. So carbon can form stable diverse compounds. Okay, from the simplest methane, simplest uh, organic molecule, kasi isa lang yung carbon until forming a complex uh, organic compound. Example of a complex organic compound is DNA. Kasi na-mention ko di ba earlier, it contains more than 100 million of carbon. Okay? Ang DNA, yung, yung uh, nucleic acid that controls genetic heritage, yan yung deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay? So these are the reasons what makes carbon so special. So again, it's because it is capable to ayan, share, always, no, always share its four valence electrons forming four stable covalent bonds. It has the ability to catenate, the ability to form multiple bonds within itself, and kaya niya nang mag-form ng diverse compounds, millions of compounds, mula si simplest organic compound na methane until forming a more complex one. Okay, so though, uh, those concepts falls under introduction to organic chemistry. So we're done with introducing org chem. Now this time, let's review uh, related ideas on atoms okay on structure and bonding so uh, we'll have a quick review very quick review lang on atoms bonds molecular geometry so we'll begin with atomic structure okay let me read the definition atom consists of a dense positively charged nucleus if this is the uh, representation of an atom on its uh, middle portion is a is a dense portion which contains uh, the nucleus nucleus um, it consists of two subatomic particles about the proton and the neutron the positively charged proton and the electrically neutral one no charge at all the neutron yun. then on the surroundings uh, ng atom at a very large distance from the nucleus. We have these negatively charged subatomic particles, the electrons. Okay? So that's for the uh, illustration ng atom. Ayan, ito yung nucleus. Bakit siya positively charged yung naka-indicate uh, no, sa illustration? It's because it is being influenced by the charge of proton present in the nucleus. Because the nucleus has protons. Okay, so na influenced siya sa charge from proton. Kaya nucleus has positive charges. Again, it's because of the proton. Then on the, uh, at a large distance surrounding the nucleus of an atom are electrons. Okay, so this time, let's try to recall naman, how do we identify proton number, electron number, neutron number of a particular atom? Okay, how do we identify, let's say for example, sodium, magnesium, what else, chlorine, uh, oxygen. Diba? These are metals. These are non-metals. How do you identify the proton number? the electron number your baseline here diba you go back to uh, the concept atomic number or capital z that's the representation or the symbol for atomic number when we represent uh, ideas related to atomic number it's capital z ayan I'm sorry okay so please take note always na ang atomic number equals proton number of an atom okay 
Parehas na na sila. Proto number of an atom. So whatever the atomic number of that particular atom, yun din yung proto number niya. Kasi equal man daw ang atomic number and proto number. How about the electron number? It also equals uh, no, the atomic number. Ang atomic number and electron, okay, parehas lang din as long as the atom is neutral. Okay, so let me write it. Atomic number equals electron number of a neutral atom. As long as neutral ha, ang atom. So lahat ng given na sample atom written on this slide, like sodium, magnesium, chlorine, and oxygen, these are all neutral. Neutral kasi walang charge. Okay, wala kang makikita ang charge, positive or negative. Okay, so yung electron number dito, same lang sa proton number, atomic number. So let's ex extract the atomic number of the following given examples. Uh, sodium, 11. Magnesium, 12. Chlorine, 17. Oxygen, 8. Yan yung atomic number nila. Makikita yung information ha sa periodic table of the elements. Okay, yan yung atomic number nila written on the left bottom side ng elemental symbol of the atom. So, proto number sulat natin. The proto number here is 11. Electron number is also 11 kasi same man. So, same goes with magnesium, chlorine, and oxygen. Okay, as long as neutral ang atom, then electron will just be equal to proton. Now, when will the electron number uh, change? Okay, if the, sulat ko, if the atom is already charged, if charged yung atom. If charged yung atom, then proton number is not anymore equal to electron number. You go back to the concept of forming cations kasi charge naman. Diba? We only have two types of charged atom or ions. We have cations and anions. Okay? If a cation is formed among metals, it means it loses electron. If anion is formed from non-metals, it means they gain electron during chemical bonding or during chemical reaction. Okay, so this time, let's identify the ion form of the following examples. Ion form, ha, meaning charged form ng sodium, magnesium, chlorine, and oxygen. So let's recall, sodium ion is an A+, plus, magnesium is 2+, plus, chlorine is negative 1+, 2 minus naman or 2 negative yung oxygen. So with that, uh, given ions of the atom, okay, ionic form of the atom, you can now identify, uh, uh, we can now infer nga iba na yung number of electrons. So okay, I want you to answer what's the electron number this time for sodium ion. It's not anymore 11. Okay, it's 10. Okay. How about magnesium? Uh, you make use of the chat box. <clears throat> it forms magnesium 2 plus. Okay, very good. Electron number here is 10 as well. And then chlorine, electron number is 18. Okay. So okay, last. Okay, your turn. Oxygen. Okay, very good. Oxygen, 10 electrons. Okay, just make use of this idea or concept. Okay, so we're done with uh, identifying ha, proton number. Okay, check na yung proton number, electron number. How will you identify it? Again, uh, go back to the atomic number. You should know the atomic number of the common element. Kasi you cannot answer the proton number, electron number, if you don't memorize diba, the atomic number of the common common element. How about neutron? How do you identify the neutron number? So, dito ko na lang siya isulat. 
I recall that neutron number of a particular atom, it's atomic mass minus atomic number. Okay, letter A, that is atomic mass. So here, you should have an idea somehow of the atomic masses sa pinaka-common na mga elements. Like ito. Itong mga uh, pre-nescent ko na apat na example ng atom of an element, common ito sila. So dapat alam nyo yung atomic masses nila. The same concept will be applied to your analysis one. I believe you have analysis one a subject. You will be doing a lot of computation sa analysis one. You will be computing molecular weight, molar mass, molality, mga concentrations, normality. And the foundation that you should be equipped with is dapat memorize nyo yung atomic mass ng mga common atoms. Okay? So that's uh, with, oh, balik tayo sa neutron number. Again, kailangan niyo yung atomic mass ng element given, atom given, i-minus niyo lang with the atomic number. Okay? Sige, let's extract the atomic masses of the given example. You can refer half or now to your periodic table. Uh, sodium 23, magnesium 24, yung rounded off na hindi yung may decimal. Yung round off niya lang. Uh, chlorine is 35. And then oxygen is 16. Okay, that's letter A. Atomic mass. Capital A. Atomic mass ha, yung nasa taas on the left side. Okay, upper part ng elemental symbol on the left side. Okay, let's find out the neutron number. Kasi given naman yung atomic mass and the atomic number. Okay, go. What's the neutron number for sodium? Atomic mass minus proton number. Okay, 12. What about, okay, madali lang yung magnesium kasi half, so 12 din. Uh, chlorine, uh, ito, chlorine, uh, it's also 18, no? 18. Then for oxygen, uh, 8. Uh, 16 minus 8, so 8 then. Okay, so that's how you identify subatomic particles. Kasi itong tatlo, electron, proton, neutron, subatomic particles yan. Okay, ng isang atom. So you know, you should know the basic information. How do you identify these three subatomic particles? The value. Okay? Sige, what else? Uh, let us also recall... Uh, Probably this was discussed in your farm call. How do you identify molecular weight? If atomic mass is uh, has something to do with the average masses ng mga isotopes of an atom, pag sinabing molecular weight or molar mass, parehas lang na yan, ha? This tells us about the sum of atomic weights. Okay, sum of atomic weights. <laughs> Of all atoms in a molecule. <clears throat> in a, sorry, in a molecule. Okay, so ato lang i-add kay sum man. So, i-add lang natin yung atomic masses ng given atom in a molecule. So, ito, you just have to compute the mass of the whole molecule. Okay, whole molecule. So, dapat yung given, isang molecule. What are examples of molecule? Ionic compound, naalala, covalent compound, acids, bases, yun. Mga molecule yun. Okay, so example, ang binigay, base na sodium hydroxide. The other one is, dito ko na lang ilagay sa baba, sulfuric acid, isang acid. Okay, tapos yung tanong, compute for the molecular weight of the given compounds, the given molecule. So, yung gagawin nyo lang, i-add nyo lang yung masses per atom. Ano yung mass ng sodium? Sulat nyo, yung sodium is 23 grams per mole. That's the unit. Unit of measurement sa atomic mass. Atomic mass units, it is being expressed in grams per mole. Okay. Then oxygen, nasa periodic table lahat ha, periodic table of elements. Oxygen, it's 16 grams per mole. Hydrogen, pinakamadali, 1 grams per mole. 
Okay? So, yeah, add nyo lang yan. What's the answer? 16 plus 23, 39, 40. Okay? 40 grams per... Tama ba? 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. 40 grams per mole. That's the molecular weight of the given molecule, sodium hydroxide. One mole lang kasi yung binigay. Okay, one mole of sodium hydroxide. How about this <coughs> acid? How will you compute its molecular weight? So, sulat nyo lang. Hydrogen, dalawa. Sulfur, isa. Apat yung oxygen. Okay? So, yung hydrogen ulit, one grams per mole. Ilan yung hydrogen na nasa molecule ng sulfuric acid, dalawa. So, ita times nyo sa times 2. Okay, you have to reflect it para makuha nyo yung total uh, uh, molecular weight of that molecule. Okay? Sulfur, it's 32 grams per mole. Okay, so times 1 kasi isa lang. Okay, wala namang subscript no, sa sulfur in sulfuric acid. And then oxygen, it's 16 grams per mole. Times how many? 4. Apat daw yung oxygen sa sulfuric acid. Sige, your turn. Compute for the molecular weight. M does, di ba kapag operational, term sa math, M does, uh, M does multiply una ay ha mag, ay ha ni mo kwa on ang sum. Ay ha mo ia add lahat. Sige, go. Okay, very good. 98. Okay, yun na mag total ha per uh, atom. Then, paano naging 98 grams per mole? I know you are very expert when it comes to addition, multiplication. Ang ato lang challenge here is the memorization of the atomic mass. Okay, as long as you memorize the atomic masses, you can never go wrong in computing molar mass. Okay? So, the rest. For the rest of the molecule na ibibigay sa inyo, lalo na sa analysis 1, okay, you can compute its molar mass, molecular weight, as long as na-memorize nyo ha, yung ito, mga atomic masses. So, as early as now, no, first week pa lang ng class, you try to have an index card, sulat nyo, no, yung mga pinaka-commonly encountered na mga elements sa chemistry, sa inyong laboratory. Ano yung commonly na-handle nyo na mga chemicals? Those are the common na mga molecules or common chemicals. Okay? So, you have to be familiar with the atomic masses. 